back to my channel. Hope you guys are doing great and hope your 2024 is off to a good start. And I hope your week was good. Like, I know it's hard getting back into, especially if you took time off, getting back into the work week. It's kind of tough if you were on vacation. So this is not, well, yeah, this would have been the first full week of work. Um, for those of you who got New Year's Day off and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully this week was not too hard on you. Hopefully you'll be able to get some reset time, some relaxing time this weekend. And hopefully this video will be, you know, fun for you this weekend. So today we are doing my favorite reads of 2023. I had to think about it. I was about to say four. My favorite reads of 2023. We're going to go through those. Because um, these are books that I feel like you should read this year. If you haven't read them before, you should read them. Because these are the ones that I was really, really excited about reading. Um, so I'm going to first start with the Disney Twisted Tale books that I read that I thought were great. And then I'm going to go into just my other books, which you guys already know. They're all thrillers, mysteries, suspense, that type of thing. Um, I don't have 23 of them. I don't know how many I have. I literally just went on the shelf and was like, yep, 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 yep. And those are the ones I picked. So we're going to see how many we got when we did. Now the first one is going to be A Whole New World by Liz Braswell. I loved... Uh, okay, so so far I've read, I think, 10 out of the Twisted Tale series. And I think, and I am so sorry about the lighting. I don't know what's going on. Because now it's even darker. But hopefully, and now it seems like it wants to get lighter. So hopefully it won't suck too bad. But anyway, back to what I was saying. I have read, I think, 10 out of, or 9, either 9 or 10 out of the 13 I have, and I think another one comes out this year, but, y'all, A Whole New World was the twisted tale I needed, because stuff was happening in this book that I was like, can you do that in a Disney book? Like, oh my gosh! Like, I really liked it. It was a whole different take on the whole story of Aladdin. You really, really got to know Aladdin better. You really got to know more about Jasmine. I'm not going to go and read the back of every single book, um, but I will post like all of my book chat playlists so that you could go back in detail. But this one was really, really good. I like the way she told the story. Um, it wasn't the, it wasn't, it didn't wrap up in a, in a bow. Like, you would think it happened. So I really, really, really enjoyed this one. Um, I didn't read As Old As Time last year, so I can't count that in this video, but that one is another one I absolutely love. But th this was it. This was it for me. The next one, Part of Your World, this one also by Liz Braswell, because I feel like out of all the Twisted Tale artists, she does a really, really good job of um, changing up the story. So this one was about Ariel. Um, of course, and the big question on this one was what if Ariel had never defeated Ursula? So this one actually takes place years in the future and it basically highlights all the things that happened because she didn't, you know, defeat Ursula and Ursula was walking around like she, she was running things for a little minute. So I really, really enjoyed this one. And then the last one of the Twisted Tale series was Straight On to Morning, also by Liz Braswell. She is that girl. What if Wendy first traveled to Neverland with Captain Hook? And this one basically is the story really of Wendy just learning who she is and also learning what she wants to do in this world, um, what she wants to fight for and everything like that. So I really, really enjoyed that. So out of the Twisted Tale series, these are the three that I'm like, if you haven't read them, you should be reading them. Y'all, I was distracted. The UPS guy came by, and I'm trying to figure out what he delivered. Because I don't remember getting any packages. So I'm kind of excited, but it's probably going to be something real lame. Because that's how it always turns out. Like that one thing you forgot you ordered, and it's not that exciting. But anyway... Back to why we're here. So my first thriller book that I'm like, you should read, The Writing Retreat. This one is by Julia Bartz. This thing was, okay, there were parts of this book that was weird. And when I say weird, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to read this. But the story is really, really good. It really did make me gasp because I was just like, what the heck is going on? How did I not peep that this was the crazy person? 
And it got to the end and I was like, y'all got y'all got to go to therapy. When you go through something like this traumatic, you need to go to therapy so you not still hold it on to your trauma. But this was a really, really good one. I will say I felt like it did kind of start a little slow. And it was more kind of like, and eh, it's a little bit weird. I don't really feel like I'm gonna like this. And then when the stuff started happening, and I can't remember when I talk about it in the video that I do. So watch that because I talk about when it picks up. So if you start reading this and you're like, why did you say this is such a good read? You just got to get to that point. And then it's really a good read because I didn't see it coming. The next one is Everyone Here is Lying by Sherry Lapina. Y'all, this book had me going like people is fool. Like just crazy. Like there are two very crazy people in this book. And if you decide to read this, you're going to find out who those two crazy people are. I did not know this book was going to turn out the way it turned out. Like, when you're reading it, you don't know what the heck is going on. You don't really have a good idea of who the person is. And when I found out who the person was, you're going to double gas. Because you're going to think you know. And then you're going to find out, well, what? Yeah, it's one of those. So, very, very good. I highly recommend reading this book. The next one is All the Dangerous Things. This one is by Stacey William ha Willingham. Um, she also wrote A Flicker in the Dark, which I actually just finished reading. So stay tuned for that January book chat. And I'll talk about that there. I like this book. I will say this for me. It moves a little slow. But like I feel like there was some unnecessary stuff. Like I just wanted it to get, get to it, get to it. But once it got to it, it got to it. So I will say, um, just take your time because you're going to get a lot of backstory. And she's going to take you through so you could get the history and all of that. But the book is actually very, very good. I didn't see what happened being the thing that happened. I was just like, y'all just be doing any old kind of thing. Like, people really be going, like, all the way out here to figure out crazy things to do to people. That's this book right here. I will say um, she does have another book coming out. It comes out actually next Tuesday, so I'm very excited because I'm going to get that one. But this was definitely a good read and sneak a little, a little tidbit. A Flicker in the Dark was even better. So I highly, highly recommend reading All the Dangerous Things. So my next one, Wayward. Now, Wayward is by Amelia. Amelia? Amelia Hart, I think is how you say that. First of all, look at the cover of this book. This book is so freaking pretty. Um, this is not like a thriller. It's more, I think it was like in the mystery type section of the bookstore. But this book is basically about three generations of women. One, two, three. Yes, three generations of women in this family of witches. And it talks about their um, challenges being different and how the world perceived them and how that caused certain things to happen to them some causing not so great things to happen to them but seeing the current and how you know once you figure out who you are and you stand in it you just prepare the, the next generation and shout out to like the, the men who stood up and did what they were supposed to do so Definitely love this one. Highly recommend it. Um, this is like a debut novel for her. And I was pissed because I read this and I was like, I want more. And she got no more books. So, yes, hopefully she has one coming soon. The next one I have is What Moves the Dead by T. King Fisher. So, this is a cute little book. It is not long at all. Y'all, this thing made me laugh because... So, basically, it's, a, it's connected to or like a re imagination of the fall of the house of usher um but you don't have to have read that book to read this one um this it made me laugh because i was sitting there reading the book and then when i found out what was going on i was like this is so funny to me but weird at the same freaking time so this one's cute um it's not a um it's more because, okay, on the back it says a gripping and atmospheric reimagining of Edgar Allan Poe's The Fall of the House of Usher. Um, so, 
You know, Edgar Allan Poe's stuff is kind of weird. This is just weird and funny at the same time, but it's supposed to be like a horror thing. I don't know. I just thought it was cute. It's really short. It doesn't take that long to read. And when I say cute, it's not like haha -ha cute. It's like, oh, dang, that's that's weird. That's, that's cute. Because I wasn't expecting that to be the thing that was going on. I like this one. So you should read it. If you want a quick little read, definitely go ahead and take this one in. Y'all. trying to figure out what was my favorite book of last year and I think it might be Dead 11. It might be Dead 11. This book is by Jimmy Giuliano. Pissed me off because this is his debut book and he got he got some very very nice recommendations from Mr. R.L. Stein himself. Chillingly creepy you've been warned. R.L. Stein said that this book gives you all, if you're like a Fear Street girl, if you like those types of books where you just have horror and ghosts and goblins and witches and things trying to snatch you up and eat you up and pull you down out of nowhere, this is what it is. First of all, some people was acting dumb in here, making bad choices, but I don't even care. It's about this town that is pretty much stuck in 1980, no, I'm sorry, 1994. Literally, every day, they are reliving the same day. And when you keep, this lady goes there and she disappears. So her brother is going to, like, find her and figure out what happened to her. But you read this entire book and then you find out what is going on and why all of these things are happening. It, it was just brilliant. Like, when I tell you, I ate this whole thing up. I was so in love with it. it gives me the horror vibes that I was looking for. I can't wait to see what else he does. And like I said, I really do believe this was pro and I'm I'm looking down at the books that I have here. This is definitely probably my favorite read of 2023. Now, the next book is called You Know Her. And this book is by Megan Jeanette. And this is why I'm struggling with my favorite read of 2023. Because baby. This was real close. Like, I feel like these two are so close. This would be number one, and this one is right on its heels. This is a murder mystery. It's about this, this black cop in Southern Town making her way up the ranks. That's like a sub-story um, and the things that she deals with and her past um, in that community. But it's basically about this person who is killing people. Um, and it, it's crazy because it starts off, they're killing with a purpose. Like, I'm killing you because you did this thing. But then it just gets weird. And the thing is, is it's like, you so close to the person. And you don't even know it. And you just gotta be careful about who you tell all your business to. Because they might come, if not directly, I'm just saying, you gotta read it. I don't want to give nothing away with this. This was, this was a good one, like, and I think this was a debut, too. Like, y'all, I got so many debut authors last year. I was so mad because when I wanted to read something else, I had nothing else to read by that person. This is one of those books. So if nothing else out of the stack, you got to read these two. Now, the last one is Vampires of El Norte by Isabel Canis. Now, she does have another book that's called Hacienda or The Hacienda. Yeah, the Hacienda. I like that one. It's cool. But this one, absolutely loved it. So I am not a romance girly, but if you throw romance into the like the little horror mix, I'm gonna like it. So this one is basically about a city. Um, it's during the time of uh let's see, because I don't want to say the wrong war. One of these wars. So Mexico in 1846, US invading. That, that time period, that's the time frame of this book. But there are these vampires that are also like an issue with these people. So they're fighting the U.S. for their land. And then they got these vampires. They're trying to figure out where they're coming from. And when y'all figure out like who's controlling the vampires, it's just like, bro, really? Y'all like, dang. Like, y'all went that deep? Like, y'all got vampire things out here going after people? Like, 
I liked it. And I loved the love story. And I don't be liking the romance stories. That ain't my thing. But I liked it in this book. Y'all, I feel like this is so scattered. Y'all probably like, girl, what the hell are these books about? Read the book. And go look at the other videos when I was more detailed. But yes, I love this one as well. So that's what? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven reads of 2023 that I'm just like, you absolutely need to be reading. So if you guys have read any of these books, I'm going to try to do the stack. You know, people stack them all up and show them all pretty. I'm going to try without throwing them all on the floor. If y'all have read any of these books, let me know your thoughts. If you are going to put any of these on your reading list, let me know. Because, you know, I'd love to hear what you think. But these are my favorite reads of 2023. And, um, you know, tell me your thoughts. Like I say, I hope you enjoyed this video. My name is Sarah. For those of you who are new here, for those of you who are coming back, thank you so much for always coming back for me and to listen to me go on and on about the books that I've read. I appreciate you guys. Join the family and I will see you guys in the next one. Have a good one.